by playwrights relationships to research and clearly yeah. like this feels like grounded in, in like uh, medical reality yeah yeah it, it, so it was, uh, it was important to me that it not be like she's metaphorically lost her memory like that uh, she has literally lost her right, memory right, right, right. and that it is a me and that it's you know and it's positive in the play that it is something that could start to come back to her you know it's not something like it's like well it's gone it's like very it's possible but it is a traumatic brain injury mm -hmm. so i did um i did kind of try to figure out um what uh you know what would be the the parameters for that and, and how somebody would be treated and if, she, if it would be something where she could have surgery or there and things like that but I was I was so I'm always so interested I feel like amnesia is such a kind of um, uh, like pot boilery plot point it's like somebody has amnesia like right, it's right, such right. a kind of like like sort of uh, silly over the top plot point a lot of the times I was just interested in writing like I, I always like to try to find something where I'm like, I want to do that, but like the way I would do it. It's, it's, there's some science and there's some, some kind of like pulp romance stuff yeah. in there. Yeah, and, uh, great. Put it all together. My personal philosophy of research is to do it, but also never let the truth get in the way of good stories. Yeah, oh, absolutely, absolutely. It's not, I always, I, I don't know if you, you were, I'm always like, is someone going to be like, well, she would actually be in the hospital for this amount of time. Right, and then, right. No one ever does. No one ever does that. Right. And I would never do that in a play. I would never be like, well, but really. But if it's my play, I'm like, somebody's. There's going to be a neuroscientist in the audience, and he's like, going to call. He's going to jump up, and he's going <laughs> to walk away. So I try to I try to keep people in reality. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> there's a demon. Yes, yes, yes. There's a demon in your play. There is a mysterious caller mm -hmm. who uh, uh, they when it first comes up, it's sort of referred to jokingly, but not in this sort of like like classic Woods horror movie sort of yeah. sort of terms, which, which sort of puts a certain like filter on it. And then and then uh, we meet some club guys who, if I'm not giving away spoilers, may or may not be uh, yep. vampires. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great, great, great. yeah, yeah. I think some of the things that you know, some of those more kind of like supernatural or monstery things are not that, not that they're not real, but they're things that she's sort of like conjuring or manifesting, and, mm -hmm. and her I think that her life feels very frightening to her, mm -hmm. and that there is so like in, you know when she kind of remembers you know a past kind of like sexual experience, she sort of like. Was that person actually a vampire? Like, did, they, did she make? Is she kind of like remembering right. that? Like, is she sort of her? The way her mind works now is so different than most people's mm -hmm. um, that I think that the, a lot of the fear and trauma that she's experienced is just sort of manifesting itself as the as these these creepy crawly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for one, you know, to put it in a sophisticated <laughs> way, um, in the, these sort of creepy crawly things and um and the, that what she and and her sort of you know she talks about in the play you know she talks about kind of her obsession with like horror and and uh and and her feelings of isolation as you know as she's kind of as she was growing up and i think that she really that that the accident kind of what happens after really just makes something in her brain kind of like see those things as opposed to just like thinking about them. Right. Yeah. Where are you now with this, uh, with the play? Like what, what are the questions that you have about it and what are, what are you wondering about? Yeah, um, I'm really excited to, um, to figure out something that I'm, I'm sort of, as I've gone through drafts of the play that I'm, I'm constantly watching out for is how, how time works in terms of mm -hmm. like when we're seeing, because we spend you know, we spend part of the play, you know, kind of seeing memories of Hazel's and, and, you know, are, you know, kind of asking the question, are we seeing them objectively? Are we seeing mm -hmm. them as she would remember them? Are we seeing them as like, you know, Mitch or Annie or any of the other characters would remember them? And I'm, I'm always kind of watching for when are we, when are we confused versus when are we like, oh, what's, 
what's going on? I don't quite know where this is, and I'm feeling disoriented, right. but it's work, you know. Right, the you good, know. Confusion, good confusion. Good confusion versus bad yeah. confusion. Um, oh, you know, always, but especially with a play like this. Yeah. And and also uh, something that I'm I'm that I was interested in, um, and I know you, your your play is probably dealing with some of these things in a different way. But like I was, um, you know, wrote the first draft during the presidential primary, and it like <laughs> very much concerned. Mm -hmm. You know, it, the play is not about the election in any way, shape, or form, but it it is sort of there is kind of like it'll dip in every now and then to yeah, that. Yeah, like yeah. it very specifically takes place in the summer of twenty sixteen. And so I'm I'm always kind of looking for how the sort of Fitzgerald there are no second acts in American life. <laughs> like how that sort of butts up with this, like that sort of like grand pronouncement butts up against this like kind of personal story about like a just a woman, you know, just a woman who's well, she's a lawyer and she's married and she got in an accident and how that kind of like this sort of micro story is mm -hmm. sort of like a very American story. So yeah. that's what I'm looking to just answer those things and then good. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, again, I'm Eric Meyer. Um, my play, The Animal Party, is having its reading on uh, Friday, November 3rd at 3 p.m. Caroline McGraw, uh, my play, I Get Restless, will have its reading on uh, Wednesday, November 1st at 7 p.m. Thanks. Yeah, thanks.